We're excited to have you join us for episode four of the Kickstart VMware Cloud Foundation and Project Series. I'm Satya Shrestha, Senior Staff Executive Solutions Architect at VMware. And today I'm joined again by my colleague, Vincent Hahn, as we continue our exploration of Kubernetes in the context of VCR. Welcome to the show, Vincent. Hey, hi, Satya. So now expanding on our discussions of traffic management and workload placement in our last episode, today we'll be focusing on inner workings of VM service and Tanzu Kubernetes Grid TKZ service within VCF. Vincent, could you elaborate on the functionalities of Kubernetes Grid TKZ service and VM service within VCF? Yeah, sure. This is the runtime services for VCF, right? So we have VM service and as well as uh, uh, upstream conformant Kubernetes clusters, right? Which is TKGS. Like many of other episodes, we're going to deep dive in each of these building blocks. So excited to talk about these two runtime services. Absolutely. So let's quickly go on what we covered last time. We talked about the ingress controller and also the load balancers in the context of TKZS and mm -hmm. also the VCF pod and VM service, right? Uh, yes, just, correct. Just to quickly do the recap of what we covered, Vincent. Yeah, so if you look at all the different kind of workloads running in VCF, whether is it VSphere pods, whether is it VM servers or TKC clusters, uh, you need some ways of providing ingress or load balancer to all these services. I have talked about using the RV solution to provide load balancer and ingress to all these different kind of workloads. Uh, if you have missed those episodes, please do watch uh, the previous episode. Yep. Last episode was all around load balancer and ingress controllers. Yeah, I highly recommend to go and watch that if you haven't watched already. Correct. So I think in that episode, we kind of, Give us the blur, right? I'm not sure whether I remember or you asked me to create some VM service, but we kind of yes. quickly glimpsed through it. So I thought maybe today will be a good time to deep dive a little bit more on VM service uh, as well as TKGS. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. man. Yeah, let's go right into it. Let's double click on those services. Yeah, sure. As you can see, this is a multi-part video series, right? And uh, we are almost in the middle of it in this series. Yeah, so let's jump straight into VM service and TKGS. And mm -hmm. if you have a little observant in, in, in this slide, this is not a new slide, right? We have it on the other episodes. It's kind of like I quick the sequence of VM service and TKGS. I have a reason for it because if you look at TKGS clusters or TKCs, uh, they actually use the VM operator, which is being utilized by VM service. Mm -hmm. So I thought maybe it's a good idea to maybe talk about VM service first, and then uh, we can appreciate the VM operator much better when we talk about TKGS, right? So that's why... I decided to switch it, okay? Yeah, that's a very good logical flow, man. And for those viewers who've been watching us on our previous episodes, this is the flow we have, right? And like Vincent said, we are midway through our this multi-part video series, and we're covering VM service and tickets yesterday. So let's go, what do you have for today for our viewers? Yeah, sure. Very quickly, to just touch on the architecture again, right? We have the underlying VCF infrastructure, mm -hmm. and uh, we have, of course, you know, supervisor cluster that's required. So whether you want to use TKC or VMs, you need to have this first, right? And uh, we also talk about this in our previous episode to supervisor clusters. You know, then we have two groups of persona over here. One is the VI admin, and they actually create supervisor namespace. You know, this is the way that how they govern, put governance, put control on the resources where the consumer can consume, right? Whether is it a DevOps team or whether is it an application team. Uh, so once they create a supervisor namespace and give it to the, the DevOps team, right? They can actually go and create different kind of workloads, uh, whether is it, you know, TKCs, uh, upstream Kubernetes clusters, VMs, as well as your ports, which is running ports natively on the hypervisor itself. Right. So the thing is like, a lot of people might question is like, oh, why do I need this different kind of workloads over here? So if you, if you look at the modern apps, you know, they comprises of, of course, you know, uh, microservices in the forms of containers, in the forms of, you know, running Kubernetes ports, but some of the services still requires a virtual machine, right? So for example, like a database, you might still want to be running it in a, a virtual machine form factor. And therefore, you you know, we, we provide the flexibility over here where you can consume different kinds of workloads in a supervisor namespace. Right. Yeah. So that's where you know you, you can see that later in my demonstration, I kind of show you that you can run different kind of workloads in a single supervisor namespace. So I thought maybe I share this up front and uh, we can talk more about it in the later slides and uh, you can appreciate it much better, right? Okay, so let's start with VM service. So I thought maybe before I talk about VM service, I give you some background context. I think I, I have talked about this in first episode, but you know maybe it's just a recap over here. Mm -hmm. So if you look at virtual machines, these are not new, right? At VMware, we, we, we started off with virtual machines and um, there's multiple ways of consuming virtual machines. So of course, you know the most common way is like you go to the UI and then uh, the vCenter, you create um, a, a new virtual machine and you can put in a lot of different 
properties and things like that, right? Like CPU and memory and things like that. Now, of course, there's other ways that, you know, appliance method is very common, right? You download the OVA from VMware or any other external sources and then you can actually import into vCenter. Mm. Then you start thinking about how can I automate and all this kind of thing where you can maybe you can use Power CLI, you know, Terraform and yeah, lots of ways that you can actually consume VMs today. Yep. Of course, we are talking about Kubernetes in VCF and we wanted to provide the Kubernetes API to consume virtual machines but in a slightly different fashion. So what we want to provide is a self-service method. And at the same time, we want to provide in a decorative manner, right? So you provide the state to a controller. Like in this case, it's the, it's the supervisor cluster is running, who's controlling the state. And we just tell it what we want, the intended state, and the controller will deal with it for us. So that's the service that we want to provide. So with this, then the consumer can start consuming it in whatever the fashion that they want. Yeah, so this is a very critical service or rather important service because there's a lot of other services that's built on top of this, right? Such as TKCs, even database as a service and things like that. Those are actually consuming this VM as a service. Right. So VM service here is basically available both for our traditional users through the user interfaces, right? Such as vCenter or Cloud Connection interface, or also through API, which mainly that's what most of the big developers do, right? Calling services through API. So right. it is available from on both forms. And especially when it comes to Kubernetes, most of the things are driven through API. So that is even more relevant, right? Yeah. And the thing is like, if you look at it, it's going to be Kubernetes API. And you know, this is extremely useful for those users that already started with Kubernetes. They actually want to use the same method to consume non Kubernetes workloads, and in this case, VMs. So they can actually use the same method, but now they can use it on VMs. Yeah, straight from YAML, right? Just do the things on YAML and then spin it up as and when needed. Great. All right. All right. So, so again, um, just maybe talk about few benefits of VM service, right? And why you should consider using it. First thing first, deployments, self-service deployments. No need to talk much about that. I think we talked about it in a previous slide. Git sort friendly, right? Like what you say, you know, it's based on YAML. And you can actually bring your own image. So you can actually customize your image, like so, so called the golden image, mm. um, the base images that you want to build your yeah. VMs on. So now you can actually use like Packer or Ansible, and then you can actually curate your images and upload the content library for your consumers to consume. Okay. Mm. The VM service also supports cloud init injections. So, for example, you know, you want to put in uh, SSH keys or, you know, some of the software that you want to install after the VM is up, you can mm. use cloud init to do that. Okay. Uh, Lifecycle management, as I um, already mentioned, it follows the Kubernetes way of uh, lifecycle management. You know, you de declare what state that you want, and then the controller will take care of it. Previously, we, when we launched this VM service, it was it was launched in vSphere 7, okay? But it's kind of, the functionality was kind of limited. We do not support like vMotion and things like that. But now we do support it, right? As of vSphere 8.0 U2, we support vMotion of VMs created by VM service. Right. And let's move on to the capabilities. Yeah, so now we have this cloud console allowing remote access. Right. So if you have, have used vCenter, you know, if you want a web console, you have to go lock on to vCenter and things like that. But then again, you know, if you look from the DevOps, they might not want to lock in or you might not want to provide them access to vCenter for them to remote console. Right. So we have provided means uh, mm -hmm. that you can allow your DevOps teams punching in some CLI and they give a URL and you can actually do a remote console into it. So I, I will show it in a demo. Mm -hmm. We have both Windows and Linux support for the VM service. You can then expose your VMs, right? You can have different kind of hardware and options that's presented to the VM. Same thing for VM service, you can do that as well. Mm -hmm. And the additional services that you needed around your v VMs, like for example, load balancer, right? Providing services to your, your VMs, yeah. uh, as well as persistent volume, storage, and things like that. Yeah, those can be you know structured in a Kubernetes style as well. Right? Right. I'll show you an example in the in the YAML file. So if you compare with a typical VM that is spawned from vCenter. Mm -hmm. And compared to something that is spawned from VM service, what is the difference there? Will there be any limitation or is it as good as how we usually, you know, spin up a VM? It's as good as a VM, right? It's, it looks, it's, you know, when you look in the vCenter, you'll see it presented as a VM. You can vMotion it, you can do snapshot and things like that. It's no different, right? The only difference is the way of consuming yes. the VMs. And the other one, it's, it's a decorative, right? So there's a controller that is actually looking at a state. So this is very good for day two operations, if you ask me, yeah. So if I, let's say, terminate that VM somehow, mm. outside, not from Kubernetes control plane, but from outside, will the declarative state or the control plane find that, hey, this machine has died and it will automatically spin it for us? Yeah. Absolutely. So that's good. Auto healing and all that kind of features, right? Good stuff. Yep. Let's go and look at VM service. Okay. So concept, let's look at the concept. Mm -hmm. So I will start off with the VM specification, right? So this is the YAML file 
that you put in all your different configuration, right? These are the few things that you need to put in. So VM class. So basically, this is the T-shirt size sizing. Okay, how big you want your VMs to be, you know, whether it's a guaranteed, non-guaranteed, and things like that. So you can specify in the VM class. And then VM image, this is the base image that I talked about. Where do you, you know, what kind of images that you want? You want, you know, Ubuntu, Photon, CentOS, and things like that, or even a Windows image. So mm -hmm. all these images are stored in the content source, which is the content library uh, yeah. in vCenter. Once you declare it, uh, they will pull this image from the content library. Mm -hmm. And lastly, you need to specify the storage class as well. You know, what kind of storage you do want. Um, and you have a storage policy tagged to it. So you just specified the storage policies in the storage class view. Then you have the VM operator. So this is a Kubernetes construct. You tell the VM service or the VM operator how your VMs is going to look like, which is basically in the VM specification. And then you know, the VM operator will then communicate with vCenter and others to create your VMs for you. Right? So that's what it does. Yeah, so quick one on the storage class. You said you talked about the storage policies, et cetera. So does mm -hmm. it mean that we need to have vSAN for this? No, not necessary. It, it can it can run on vSAN and mm -hmm. it can run on you know any other storage as well, right? Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Good stuff. Wait, so this is the VM class. So I have a screenshot on it. So you can, this is how you define a VM class. You can put in a name, you know, CPU, uh, memory, and, you know, if you want to have additional PCI devices, you can do that. So this is showing that you're adding a GPU for this uh, class. Right? Right. So GPU, yeah, even GPU, PCI, all these external things are also supported. Yeah, correct. So if you like, you want to run some AI uh, workloads on your clusters, you can actually create a VM class and put in a GPU for it, right? Nice, nice. This is kind of typical, right? In your, it's, it's like an OVF file where you have all the different properties over there. So out of the box, you have 16 default VM classes available. And of course, mm -hmm. you can go and create your own VM class. Yeah. So we do support Windows as well for VM service. Yeah. So the only difference over here is probably the if you want to customize it, uh, you have to use the sysprep uh, transport type. That's all. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Let's deep dive into the, the, the manifest itself. Okay. Yeah. So of course, you know, you have to create a virtual machine kind. You have to specify the name. You can use uh, DVPG or you can use the NSXT network. So in my example, I'm going to show you how you use the NSXT network. And yeah, so you specify the VM class over here. But everything, you can get it from the CLI, right? right. You can get Kubernetes, Kubectl, you get virtual machine class binding. You get to see, you know, what the sizes. And then you can just pick this from and put it into your YAML file. So same thing, likewise, for the VM images. Uh, once you upload the image to your content library, you can also use the CLI to pick it up. And then you see what's the available one and put it inside your image name. Mm -hmm. So this is where your cloud config, okay? So, mm -hmm. so you specify your cloud config, right? put in your SSH keys, your password, or whatever. And then yeah. you have base64 encoded. And then you put it under your virtual machine YAML file. Yeah. So, yeah, not a very long YAML file, uh, but you just need to put in the right things for you to create a VM. Yes, so, and also define those things already outside, right? So we can refer them. Great. Yeah, excellent. Let's move on to the demo. I already have my supervisor cluster ready. So first thing first, maybe I'll show you from a VI admin perspective. Before then, I you know, assume the role of a, a DevOps team, OK? <laughs> so let me log on to the vCenter. You can see that I have some namespaces already created, right? Yep. So I'm going to use the namespace for, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah. And yeah, so you can manage the namespace. So you can see here, before you can use the content library, you need yeah. to go and specify like, you know, this, um, sorry, under the VM service. Under VM service, which content library you want to use? So oh, this, right. yeah, so VI admin has to go in over here and, uh, you know, select the content library, okay? Mm -hmm. And before that, of course, let me show you the images inside the content library. Right. So I really have uploaded a CentOS OS images inside right. this content library, okay? Mm -hmm. So now, yeah, I pass the namespace to the DevOps team, and yeah, they can go and start consuming the VM service. Okay. Yeah. Can you also show the VM class from the VI admin view? How the VM class is defined? Oh sure. Yeah. Thanks mm -hmm. for bringing that up. So if you can, yeah, go to the workload management, right? You can. So uh, over here. Right. Yeah. VM classes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can you can have to select what VM class you want to provide to the DevOps team, right? So you can restrict it. So as I said, there's 16 default VM classes. You know, I just turn on everything, right? Got and it. they can just pick what they want over here. Yeah, thanks for bringing how that about up. The, 
Yeah, how about the stories also? Can we quickly see the stories policies and what's on the stories? Yeah, yeah. So again, you can you, you have to take your different storage policies to different mm -hmm. kind of storage. So you know, maybe one for VSAN, one for you know NFS or whatever that you have over here, right? And you can have different tierings, right? Some you have NVMe, right? Maybe you have VSAN ESA, right, that you want to use. So those are NVMe, right? You want to put it as like gold class. And then you have some secondary storage or supplementary storage that you can put different policies on, right? So again, the VI admin has a lot of control, right? What kind of resources they want to expose to the DevOps teams, right? Maybe for the data scientists, they want to provide a lot of storage. And also maybe, you know, they want to create a VM class with a GPU, right? So yeah, those can be restricted through yeah, VM so class. Yeah. Highly configurable and really good for governance. Yeah, I like that. Correct. Sure. So DevOps, right, they, they log in to the system, they have the supervisor, the namespace that really they have. And mm. yeah, so I'm going to show you, let me bring out the YAML file first, okay? Okay, so I have created kind of the template, right? Uh, virtual machine, put in the name, the namespace, all these are already there. I left a few things empty over here, right? So just to show you how to get all this information. So what image you want to on, be on, and uh, the VM class okay, over here. Then the rest is, you can define the state you want to, the power on when you create this VM or you stay power off, uh, you can yeah. specify over here. Mm -hmm. So in the storage class policies, so this yeah. has to be aligned with the storage policy that you've, you've seen over at the vCenter. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, so you can use uh, DBPG or you can use an NSXT network. So you can specify over here. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so this is the, the cloud config. I really have provided the config map, right? And uh, put in, you know, base64 encode the cloud config. I can show you the cloud config later on. Yeah. This is the additional service. Mm -hmm. uh, so what I'm doing here is this load balancer and mm. providing, because mine is uh, it's all private network, right? So if you don't provide this load balancer service, you can't even SSH to the to the VM itself. So I have to expose this using a load balancer and I'm using RV obviously for my demo. So yep. I just buy over here. So yeah, so as you can see, everything is one YAML file. Okay, now I'm going to get the, the image name, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, you know, um, get in the yeah, image. All right, we need to specify the namespace. Yeah. The content library that, that I just associated over here. Yes. Uh, you can see this, this is the SandWest images. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so I have to put this name over here. Uh, yeah. So it's just squaring that content library and Could. then extracting whatever is within that content library. And we earlier saw you only had one image there, which is exactly uh, what it is here, right? Yeah. Great. Mm. Yeah, so that's the that's the image, and we need the. Uh, class. Yeah, we need a VM class. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you basically just get the virtual machine class bindings, yes. and you get to see all the different class. So, so yeah, I'm just gonna use best effort small. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's about it, and I think that's done. Uh, but I do want to show you the cloud config. Right, so this is this is the cloud config, and uh, you know, so basically, you know, I want to enable SSH. I can actually put in the username and the password. Right, so this is the password, and then you know, I just want to write some file when uh, the VM is up. Yeah. Right, so so you base sixty four encode this, and what you do is you know put it over here. Right, so this is how you refer it to right. the cloud config. Wow. Right. Yeah, very neat. All right, so let's apply this. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, it's it's um you can go and get VMs. Yep. The namespace. Oh, right. So you can see that it's building up. So let's log on to vCenter and see. So you can see that it's pulling the image right now. Yeah. Uh, sure. yeah, and it's creating. You know, let me log into the. Let me show you over here. So you can see over here. Yeah. Yep. So this VM is created, and yeah, you had to wait a couple of minutes for this VM to be up. So I, yeah, very very neat. I have I already have one that's already created in the namespace tree. So I'm yep. gonna just show it to you over here how it's yep. actually like. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, it has more than one VMs, right? Because you know there's a TKC over here as well. So so let me show it to you. So now I specify namespace tree. So assuming that um you know after a few minutes this is already done, we can yep. see this VM over here. Mm -hmm. Uh let me lock on to the VM. Okay. Yep. So basically now I need to go and get service in the namespace tree. Mm -hmm. uh, I have exposed it using a load balancer, and this yep. is the IP, the username is VMware. VMware, yeah. Okay, and then I put in the password, and there you go, right? Um, I'm the VM, and I can cat, uh, 
hello world, right? I, mm-hmm. you know, how in it, I actually put in to write some file. Yeah, so yeah. there you so go. This was, so this was up for two days and 15 hours, it seems, right? Can you also try to look at the uptime? What is it? So it doesn't match? Oh, okay. Yeah, it matches. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Awesome, man. This is how you do it. And then, you know, of course, if you want a remote console, you, you might not want to use uh, SSH, right? I talk about the remote console. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so basically, maybe I'll just show you the command. So you can just use this command, uh, web console, and then specify oh. the VM name and the, the namespace, right? Nice, nice, nice. So it will actually give you a URL. Okay? Mm. And you can just take this. So this is, I don't know if you have used public cloud before, right? You, it's, it's in a console. And now we actually put in a URL. So, you know, the DevOps team can go and uh, take this URL, place it in the browser, right? Oh, nice, nice. Console. Yeah. Same thing, I'm going to log in using the same username. Right? Excellent. Get the control, get the URL, yeah. Awesome, uh, man. Very, very nice. Yeah. yeah, there's really no need for the DevOps team to go and um, you know, log into the vCenter and, and, yeah, and yeah. do that. Yeah. Awesome demo, man. I like it. Really good. Okay, so let's the I think it's still deploying. Let let the new VM deploy, and uh, we can move on to talk about uh, TKC, right? Yeah, let's go on TKC. Yes, yeah, yep. So again, um, you know why we created TKGS is basically we want the DevOps teams, apps team to deploy Kubernetes clusters upstream, Kubernetes conformant, Kubernetes clusters. Right, they are able to self service it. They can use whatever methods they want. Right, again, UI, CLI, yeah. they can actually go and consume all these services. Just like VM service, we actually have VM operator mm. to create a VM service. So this TKGS service is based on cluster API. It's a open source project. You can go and take a look at it. And basically we build cluster API for different cloud providers, right? So in this case, the cluster API has to work for vSphere. You can create, you can standardize uh, different clusters, TKGS clusters. So effectively with that, you can use a cluster to create many clusters. Right, so that's what I mean. That cluster that we talk about that's able to create many clusters is the supervisor cluster. Mm-hmm. Okay? And then with that, you can actually go and create multiple TKGS clusters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's multiple capabilities for TKG. So we have cluster class, we have you know the availability zones. Yeah. On it, uh, in the next session, um, yeah, definitely supports on VCF. It has the PNIP integration, right, for authentication. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so multiple capabilities over here. Okay. All right. So as I said, it's based on this cluster API. And mm-hmm. yeah, so effectively what it allows you to do is you define how your cluster is going to look like. You can use it like a template. You can deploy it multiple times. Again, for Kubernetes, yeah, right? You do basically specify how many control plane that you want, how many worker nodes that you want, and then mm-hmm. you just declare it and the controller will go and create it for you. Every cluster that's been created is going to be the same, right, from, from each cluster. So this is where your standardization actually comes in. The other good part about using this method of creating Kubernetes clusters is for day two operations. Mm. So for example, you know, Kubernetes actually releases the updates pretty often, right? You can actually, you know, specify, you know, what's the new images that you want to use, then they will take care of the upgrading in a rolling manner upgrade for you, right? So this is really good for day two. Yeah, right. And how do we actually do that for TKGS? It's basically VMware will take the new Kubernetes release and we were actually released in the form of what we call the TKR, Tanzu Kubernetes releases. So all these releases is put in on the CDN, right? Your content library, can have, which we have internet access, you can actually, it will download it automatically. So you can mm-hmm. see over here, right? Just show you an example over here. So this is on the Ubuntu image and it is on 1.26.5. Yep. And so we have like photon images on the 1.24, right? So these are all the different Kubernetes images. So you can actually specify this. For example, you want an older version, you want to upgrade a new version. You just put all these images into your YAML manifest and the controller will go and update it for you, right? right? So now let's take a look how you actually create the clusters, right? The manifest for it. Of course, mm. you, now you need to specify a kind cluster and of course the namespace and things like that. These are usual stuff. Uh, put in the side of blocks and all this. So this is the TKR that I talk about. You need to all specify right. which TKR version mm. that you want to use. Okay, mm. and of course, you know, how many control plane, how many replicas. And again, right, you need to specify how big your Kubernetes nodes is going to be, right? Um, yep. So this, again, they use back VM uh, class for this, mm-hmm. okay? Last thing, it's storage policy, okay? Right, right. So quick one on this TKR you mm-hmm. spoke about. So does it 
automatically get populated in the list or do you have to go or download? What is the process for that? Bringing the new yeah. version to TKR? If there is a new uh, version, right, you'll fetch from uh, the repository, right? If you have internet access, it's it downloaded automatically. Right. And if you are on the air gap environment, then what you can do is you download the images and mm -hmm. you upload to the content library manually, right? So, right. right. Yeah. And then in terms of content library, is it like going to be like a default content library or how is that content library connected or defined? Yeah, so when you create um, the supervisor clusters, by default, they really have one default a Kubernetes content library, right? right? Of course, you can then go and create your own content library to store all these different TKR as well, right? So, okay. so it's customizable. Okay, got it. Yeah, you can, you know, have some base images and then even customize, you know, like VX service, you can customize the image, I think for... Mm -hmm. Uh, TKGS, you can also customize the images if you want to, right? Right, right. Anyway, right, let's do a demo on it, right? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so now I'm going to, same thing, um, instead of a, what do you call it? VM service, now you have a TKC. Mm. So the user stuff, I'm not going to go through it. But again, I left some fields missing. So the VM class, yep. and then you have the, TKR, oh. you need to specify yeah. which version they want, right? So this is mm -hmm. for the control plane and the worker nodes as well. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah, you you can also specify the CNI. So you know, um, there's two optional here. Yeah. Helico ensure. So I'm using ensure. Okay. Yeah. So again, I'm going to get the class bindings, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use uh, small for the control plane and maybe medium for the worker nodes. Okay. So yeah. I'm going to and I'm going to use okay. Mm -hmm. And the next one, I need to get the TKR. So I get the TKR. All right. So these are all TKR. And yeah, I'm going to use one of the latest release, which is 1.26. Right. This one. Right. 1.26.13. Right. So how often does this TKR get released? Is there uh, regular intervals? Yeah, so um, it takes a while. So, so Kubernetes actually takes maybe four months to release one release, something mm. like this. Yeah, but you know because we need to you know put it into our format, you know we release it. So there is some gap currently. Uh, right. It's not it's not as fast as the Kubernetes release, and we get it up. Uh, but there's, there's there's plans to actually make it release Kubernetes faster, right? So it's upcoming. So stay tuned for that. Yeah. Right. Okay. And all of these are upstream conformant, like you said earlier, right? Correct. Yes. So there you go. You just need to specify all these things, okay? Excellent. And you can start, now start applying, and you can get TKR, sorry, TKC. Right, so it's already start creating, right? So we can see, um, it takes a while. So, you know, in the namespace for you can see mm -hmm. uh, the VM is being created, right? Right. So again, I, I, I have a TKC in the, the other namespace. So one is done, it will show that the ready is true, Mm. Right, and then you can go and log in to it, right? So you yeah. just specify, um, so I'm going to just log in. So I have some, some shortcut over here. So yeah. once done, you can log in, and then you can see all the Kubernetes nodes, and you can start yeah. going apps on it, right? Yeah. This one is on your namespace three, which you have already deployed, right? Right, yeah, like three days ago. <laughs> yeah, so two two worker nodes and one control plan. Got it. Right, yeah. I can show it to you, right? You know, you can actually scale it out if you want to. Um, yeah, maybe additional bonus demo. <laughs> Let's have a quick look here. Let's make it three. Yeah, so maybe I want to make it three, right? And the work on three. Yeah. Work on as well. Okay. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So once it's done, yeah, I need to make sure they are logging into the supervisor clusters, right? So just to make yeah. sure. So, yep. So I'm the supervisor cluster and I can apply this. Yeah. So okay. you get, uh, let's see, you get TK. Uh, see namespace tree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see that it's uh yeah the control plane is upgraded to tree, right? Yeah. And wait, hang on a minute. Did I change the worker as well? Okay, so it, it takes some time, right? Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. Nice so, one, man. Very so, easy. You know, uh, the supervisor cluster will go and create you know three more VMs, right? Uh, to make three control VM and three worker nodes. Yeah. Nice one. Nice one. I like it. I hope you have a better understanding on VM service and TKGS. And yeah, so for the next episode, um, we're going to talk about the multi-zone support. Like for high availability, we're going to talk about supervisor services as well. So, Absolutely. I really appreciate your demo, man. That was very well presented. And we also got a bonus demo there. I really appreciate you taking the time to walk us through the whole demo. 
Yeah, sure. Happy to do that. Excellent. So that's all we have time for today, everyone. So for our next episode, we'll be getting into the nitty-gritty of Mothison support and some of the supervisory services. And thanks a lot again, Vincent, for joining us. Most welcome. See you in the next episode. Absolutely. And big thanks to everyone who joined us today. See you all next time. Bye for now. Bye.